everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to continue my Cricut Design Space Tips and Tricks series. Today's video is just going to be completely random tips and tricks. If you haven't watched my old videos, I have a tips and tricks for print and cut and also tips and tricks for slice and contour. I'll link both of those videos below if you're interested in watching those. I decided to break these videos up into four different videos. These will be great if you are a beginner with the Cricut or if if you've used it for a while, hopefully they will be helpful as well. So I will just get right into the video. I hope you enjoy this. Give it a thumbs up if you do and subscribe if you're new to my channel. Here we're in the Cricut Canvas where you do all of your creating. So as you can see, it shows up with these grid lines. There's a way to take these off. You can click over here at the top and go to settings and click on no grid. Then you can just click out of there and you have this white background. Having this white background can be really nice if you want to take a screenshot of your image. So if you are wanting to do a stock photo, you can do that by taking a, use a snipping tool to take a screenshot of it. And it also is just helpful if you want to visualize your project a little bit better. But I want to show you an easier way to get to this where you don't have to go to settings. So I'm going to switch it back to my full grid. And in the upper left hand corner here, you can see a little tiny square. If you just select that, it'll change it. So you can select it three different times. Here's the grid lines. If you select it one more time, it shows a square inch. And then if you select it again, it shows the white background. So that's kind of a fast and easy way to get to that. The other thing I want to show you is you can also change the background of this. So if you go down to blank canvas, select that and at the way top it says color and you can change the color sometimes this is nice as well if you are wanting to visualize something or if you're working with a project that has a light of a lot of white colors in it so it would make it easier to see it so sometimes it's kinda nice to have that option there if you want to switch it back just select the blank canvas down here again and go back up and select white and then I'm just going to go back to my grid lines because this is usually how I like to visualize what I am creating. So the next thing I want to show you is if you go to my projects, you can see all of your projects here. And if you have a ton of projects and you're trying to find an old one, it's difficult to do this in Cricut Design Space. But I do have a fun little hack for this. I am using a Windows. So I'll be selecting Control F. If you have a Mac computer, then I believe it's Command F. So right now I'm going to select Control F. And you can see at the top there's a little search bar that comes up. Let's say I am searching for a Ray Dunn project that I have done. So I can start typing in Ray Dunn. And you can see how it changes. And it highlights Ray Dunn. So it'll scroll down for me and it'll find some of my Ray Dunn projects. I think this is really helpful. You can just start type in what you are searching for and it's really a cool tool to have. The next thing that I want to go to is my uploads and I want to show you how I easily erase different parts of an image that I upload. So I'm going to select upload image and I am just going to upload an image from my computer. I'm going to select this image here, then I'm going to select complex and hit continue. So you can see all of the different parts of this, but let's say I just want softball baseball mom. You can click on the erase tool and erase these, or you can use the wand. But what I like to do when I want to get rid of a whole bunch of the image is I go up to the crop button. I will just crop this and then it'll automatically erase everything that was around it. So this makes it super easy if you are trying to upload something that has a lot to it and you only want a certain part of it. And then you can also hit the preview screen and it helps to look at it. And as you can see, I didn't finish the baseball, so I would have missed that, so I'll hit hide. Then I just want to go up to my wand and select these. Load this into Cricut Design Space. The next thing that I want to show you is some of the images in Cricut Design Space. So here's all of the images 
and you probably already know but an A means that it is Cricut Access so if you pay for the Cricut Access then you are able to use all of these images you can also use these if you don't pay for Cricut Access but you would just pay for um, pay for them a lot of times they are around 99 cents so you can still use these and sometimes they have free images if you go to categories you can see that it has free this week so all of these are free for the week. Cricut Design Space has tons and tons of images and it's kind of hard sometimes to search through it but I want to show you a little trick with this. I would search for the least amount possible and I would not use plural. So let's say we are searching for an image with bears. If you type that in and hit enter you can see there's only a few that pop up here. But if you delete the S and hit enter, then there will be hundreds that will pop up. So I just feel like whenever you're searching for images in Cricut Design Space, just put the least amount possible in there and you'll have more that will pop up. And when you're scrolling down, it'll kind of keep going. So they just have tons and tons of images in here. And if you're interested in Cricut Access, I do have a link below. I do subscribe to Cricut Access. They have tons and tons of images, but um, you don't have to. You can also just Google images, find um, SVGs on blogs. So there's lots of other ways that you can have images as well. One last thing I want to show you here is if you go to cartridges, these are kind of cool because these are basically image sets. So it'll show, oops, these are just bears. So it'll show all of these different image sets, which is kind of fun if you're looking for something specific. And here's all of the different ones. Now I'm just going to upload an image from Cricut Design Space. So I'll just find one that looks like a good one to work with. I think I'm going to select this one. So I'll select that and hit insert image. And you can see this one has a ton of layers. So when you look over at the layers panel, you can see all of the different layers with this image. Um, and right now it is all grouped together. So you can hit ungroup to separate each layer if you want to work with it. And to me, the layers panel is just the most important part to me out of Cricut Design Space because it really helps you visualize what you are doing. Also, I just wanted to show you in the layers panel, there is the eye icon. And this is really helpful because if you select this, it will hide whatever layer it is. So you can see the S down here. If you hit the hide button, then it is gone. It will, when you click make it, the Cricut machine will not cut that out. So I like using this all the time instead of hitting delete because if I want to go back in and use that later then it's still there so I use this eye icon a lot it's just nice instead of having to delete something I want to show how you can sync colors let's say you want to change all of these colors to different colors let's say we want to change it to a green so one way you can do it is select the letter and go up to line type select that and change it up here but a faster way to do this if you want to change all of these colors to the same color is click on the sync button here and this is a really nice tool that I it took a while for me to actually start using this so let's say we want to change it to this green color you can just drag your letters over to that color and it'll switch it to that color so you can just drag all of your letters over and you can see here it changes it all to green it's so much faster to be able to do it this way the next thing I want to show you is where I get most of my fonts I get this from defont.com I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this this website is so amazing I rarely use Cricut Design Space fonts most of the time I get fonts from defont.com so here's the website and they just have so many fonts I really like their script fonts but they just have so many and these are free for personal use I have a video showing how to download these fonts. I'll link that down below if you are new to Defont and want to download this onto your computer and into Cricut Design Space. Here's some of these script fonts. I'm going to click on this one. And as you can see, if you want to use this commercially, so if you want to use this font for decals or shirts that you are selling, then you have to buy a commercial license. So you can see here it says purchase the license for commercial use 
and up here, if you can see, it says free for per personal use. So you can download this and import it into Cricut Design Space and use these for your projects. You can see here there's these little glyphs or swashes. Those sometimes do not automatically show up. So I have a video just showing how you can access those. So I will link that video down below as well. So I am going to go back into Cricut Design Space. Another thing that I've noticed too, if you have Cricut Design Space up and go into defont.com and download a font, you will have to hit refresh. I've done it before where I've downloaded a font and I started searching for it in Cricut Design Space and it wasn't showing up. So what you need to do is hit refresh, then you'll be able to find it. Next, I just want to pull up a font. I'm going to pull up Magnolia Sky. This one is probably my favorite script font. I love it, and you can download, download this from defont.com. But I am just going to type in hello. So you can see that the script fonts, they show up with these big spaces between it, and they're not connecting. For some reason, Cricut Design Space, it just pulls up the letter spacing really weird. And even with font that's not a script font, I will a lot of times bring the letters closer together. So I just want to show you how you do that. You can go up to letter space up here and you can start moving it in. But with script font, a lot of times I have to ungroup the letters to make it fit exactly how I want it. It looks like that actually looks really good, but sometimes it doesn't match up. So what you can do then is go up to ungroup and just slide these closer together. Once you get those connected, you'll just want to select all of these letters and you will want to click weld. So that is down at the bottom right here. If you click weld, this makes it one image, one layer on the layers panel here. Another thing that I wanted to show you, if you cannot remember what font you used and after you weld it, that text bar, if you click on text, this text bar comes up. But if you've already closed out of this project and gotten back into it, um, you will not know what font this is, but an easy way to figure out what font you used is you can just right click on this layers layer in the layers panel and you can see I hovered over it says, oops, let's try it again. Okay, right click on it, image info, and you can see it says Magnolia Sky right here. So you can still find out what font you used. I've done that before where I've welded a font and I couldn't figure out what font I used. Another cool thing that I want to show you, if you want to turn this and make it vertical instead of horizontal, you can start turning this, but if you want to make it exact, I'm going to hit undo, you can select it and hit shift on your keyboard, then start turning it, and you can see it turns it at exact angles here. And then you can make it at a complete 90 degree or turn it completely 90 degrees. This is helpful if you're doing like the knockout text and you need to turn the font. I'm just gonna turn it back. Another thing that I wanna show you, if you're wanting to use the Cricut pens and draw something, if you click on text, and I'm gonna type in Times New Roman. I'm just gonna pick a random text and I'll type in hello. So you'll want to change this to a right, it says draw. So up here where it says line type, you'll click on draw. And you can see when you do that, it makes it look like bubble letters, which usually is not something that you would want. You want it to look like solid lines instead of these bubble letters. So you'll just want to choose a writing font. So if you go up to font, you can go over to filter and you can select writing font. So then you're able to choose a font that really works well with the drawing feature. So I'm just gonna choose a random one here. I'll choose this one. So now it changes it where it is a solid line. I think most of the fonts in Cricut Design Space you have to pay for the writing fonts but there is some other fonts that work well even though it doesn't say writing font. So sometimes that you just have to kind of play around and see if you can find ones that work. Sometimes really thin fonts seem to work. 
Another thing that I wanted to talk about was sharing projects. If you design something in Cricut Design Space or if you uploaded an image that you liked and if you wanted to share that with somebody else that has Cricut Design Space, you can go up here and copy this link and then you can just share that link with somebody else if you wanted to through like an email. I can show you here if we go to a new tab and hit paste and hit enter. Oh, and you know what? You want to save it first. So I'm going to click out of there. I am going to save this as, I'll just say hello. Okay, so make sure you save it first. Then you should be able to save, um, then you should be able to share it. So I'm going to copy this. I'll hit paste and enter and here it'll show up. So if you want to share something with somebody, you can just send them that link. You can also share something through Pinterest or Facebook. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go to my projects, oops, my, my projects at the top here and I'm just going to select one. I'll select these infusible ink coasters. When you select it, it'll give you an option to customize or make it, but you can also see here that you can share this. So if you select that, it says to share this project, add more info. So click that. And what you'll want to do is make sure that it's invisible to, uh, not invisible, <laughs> visible to others. And you can add a photo. So I will select that. And I will select my pictures of these. And you need to add a description here, so I'll just say okay, then I'll hit save. And right here it shows up where it gives you the option where you can share it on Facebook or Pinterest. I'll, I'm just going to select Pinterest so you can just see. So here you are able to create a pin and that's what it shows up like. So I'll click out of that. So that's kind of a fun thing that you can do there. I think that is all of my tips and tricks for this video. I hope that you guys found this helpful. If you have any fun Cricut Design Space tips and tricks, comment below and let me know what they are. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. It's completely free. If you hit the notification bell, you'll get notified every time I make a new video. And I hope you have a great day.